all heard stories from our children about name calling and bullying in the schoolyard. Homophobic bullying is happening in every school and can be devastating for the victims. Here to tell us more is Cullum Keane, who was bullied at school, and Dave Roach, manager of the Gay Community Development Project in Cork. You're both very welcome. Sure. I'm going to start with you first, Dave. Describe what homophobic bullying is. Well, I suppose not, but not going into any huge sort of dictionary mm. definition of it. It's any bullying that arises out of a perception of homosexuality. And I think that's important. It's a perception of homosexuality, not actual homosexuality. The vast majority of young men who are homophobically bullied are not gay young men. Okay. They're just young men who don't fit a stereotypical image of what men are supposed to be like in our society. And what are men supposed to be like, young men in our society? I think we have a hangover of what men used to be, you know, old GA Ireland and that kind of stuff, and we still suffer for that. So anyone who doesn't fit that script is assumed to be different, and being different is not acceptable. There's two things going on here, right? There's the teasing in national school level, where a child is called gay and it's an insult. Oh, he's gay. Why? Do, they don't know what gay is, but they're using this word as an insult. How did that come about? That's come about because of our acceptance and the, pervas the pervasive use of the term in our society. We accept that gay now means something negative. Okay. You know, in the old days, in my day, it was like sort of, you know, oh, he's very queer. You know, now it's gay, and it's just become a negative connotation. So immediately before the child gets to understand what gay is, mm -hmm. before the child meets someone who's gay, the, ch the child has this image, gay is an insult. So yes. that's what a start to life. But they, they don't ever link it to anybody or any particular lifestyle or anything. Okay. Like my nephews would say it, but they wouldn't link it to, my, to me. You know. Yeah, like a, a chair that's wonky can be gay now, or yeah. you know, something that isn't the right colour, or that's a gay t-shirt. So something that isn't right is perceived, uh, can, be, can yeah. be called gay, or the term gay yeah. is used now. Now, as we get into second level, bullying, of course, can be very different. It can be quite severe as well. They'd use the word faggot. And they know what they're saying, though. Oh, it's, it's completely different yeah. at that level. Yeah, I mean, when you use the word faggot and that, you know, it's, again, the, I think the root of it is similar. It's societal, we have a hangover, there's an ethos in this country, there's the sort of perception that everybody is heterosexual. And that assumption of heterosexuality, particularly in schools, is the cause of this. So when a teacher looks down across his class, particularly of boys, you know, for example, in a boys' school, because I, I deal with young men, he assumes heterosexuality. And he's not seeing... How can we assume yeah, anything? No. We can't assume anything. Is it like, is it as simple as the redhead, you know, being called ginger at school, the kid with the glasses called specky four eyes? Is it that simple to a certain level and then it gets quite severe? I think all bullying is simple in, in, in its causes, but interestingly, we've seen the disappearance of most forms of bullying. Okay. For instance, we don't hear certain words in the, in the schoolyard anymore, and quite correctly. Yes. Certain minorities, uh, certain nationals, members of the traveling community, you'd never hear those names, they were quite pervasive in my day. But well, political correctness has kicked in to a point, but yet it doesn't seem to have kicked in when it comes to Not homophobia at all. at all, especially homophobic bullying. Tell me your story, Tom. Um, well, I was, in, I was in secondary school, an all-boys secondary school in Nace, and from first to third year, things were really bad. Um, they kind of uh, singled me out from the stars. It, it did tr uh, follow on from primary school. The guys that went into my secondary school kind of, kind of started it, and then anyone who, who was in when you, If you don't mind me saying, so when, you, when it started, what, what started? What did they say? It, was, it started off as, as name-calling and stuff like that, the, the words that um, Dave, Dave has used there. Um, and then it kind of went on that if I was in PE and stuff, they'd be like, oh, don't look at me, whatever, that type of stuff. And then it went on to be physical things. In science class, I remember being beaten up during class. We were doing an experiment. I don't know if the teacher saw or not, to be honest, because I was too um, caught up in <laughs> the situation. But um, yeah, it, it happened there. So it just it, it continued on for ages. And then when I went into transition year, I found that the guys who were filled with all of this bravado, who, mm -hmm. who had the peer thing of, oh, a faggot or whatever, mm -hmm. they went on to fifth year, didn't do transition year. They wanted to get out as quick as possible, whatever. And then in transition year, we kind of had a college type atmosphere. So um, it, it got better. Yeah. So tell me, I mean, to how extreme? Give me an idea what you were called at the beginning. Um, queer, um, all lads, bums to the wall, that type of thing. Crazy things. Um, and is it, do you, I mean, did they know you were gay at that stage or were you just it I didn't fit the manly stereotype. Mm. So, I didn't so you weren't maybe into the hurling or the football yeah, or yeah. the or soccer? Or at or least whatever. I wasn't even given a chance, to be honest. Okay, okay. So anyone that was different is, 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 was, is, was being bullied, really? I think there are usually five themes that we associate with any kind of bullying, really. It's an ethos, pervasive terms, um, particularly homophobic bullying now, pervasive terms, um, the, as I said already, heteronorm sort of normalcy, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And there are a few other things like that, that. And it's also a lack of willingness to engage with it. It's a fear on the school's part to engage. Okay. They've engaged around other minorities, yes, but they, haven't but they won't what engage. What was the 
reaction from the school with you? <clears throat> I mean, um, the teacher that saw you being beaten up. Well, I, I mean, don't, I don't know. Okay, the teacher that was in the class when you were uh -huh. being beaten up. Let's face it, Colm. I mean, she must have seen, or he must have seen. So without mentioning any names, did you do you think that you that they turned their back because they knew you were gay and they didn't want to deal with it, or what? I'm not too sure, and um, to be honest, um, I know that when a couple of teachers, there was one teacher in particular, and he was amazing. He was he dealt yeah. with it greatly. Um, and, um, That's to be admired, but in fairness, you went through a whole system nearly. Yeah. You had nearly finished school, and nobody was doing anything. Yeah, there was about only this. one, and that was only in my final year. Can I ask you, years. though, for parents out there, had you told your parents what was going on? I told my parents I was gay just before I started transition year. Okay, did your parents know you were being bullied? Yes, they did. And did they take action? They called the principal, and um, he had a meeting with the guys, but there was, it was basically just a slap across the wrist, nothing serious at all. Yeah. It didn't but stop But it wasn't anything. being taken seriously. Mm -hmm. Let's just look at a few figures. In 93% of the schools, there's a bullying policy. Mm -hmm. Only in 32% of them is there homophobic bullying policy mentioned or homophobic bullying at all mentioned, okay? In 90% of schools in the SPHE classes, that's the social, mm -hmm. personal health education, which would be civics in our day, only thir 33, 37, 30 to 37 percent of those schools discuss gay issues. Is that the problem? That is hugely the problem. And actually, I think those figures are actually way worse than that. I actually think those figures I think are way, way worse, worse than, than that. that. I, I don't think 37 percent of schools ever discuss Okay, in it. national school, yeah. you sign a, a contract or you sign a form to allow your child to have se sex education at school. There's no mention of gay relationships or gay issues in that. Is it being discussed? No, it's not being discussed no. at all. I mean, we go into schools, we deal with youth groups, we do sort of patch up work Second after level. schools. Second level. Yeah. Um, we do patch up work afterwards, you know, because that's literally what you're doing. You're, the school system is dealing with it, or not dealing with it rather, sending them out, and we've got to pick up the pieces on the outside. Okay, so the school system isn't dealing with it, the media isn't obviously dealing with it properly. Let's have a look at this documentary to be aired next week. Explores homophobic bullying in schools and the lasting effect it can have on young people. Have a little look at this, it's going to be on Channel 4. Approaching my school again, I can feel myself tensing. How many teens like me are in the playground today going through the same torment and isolation that I did? Everyone knew I was gay at school, but I was getting so much hassle for it, I didn't feel I could come out and actually say that I was. I was afraid the bullying would have got worse if I did. I got picked on in the playground, the toilets, the corridors. Every corner of the school has an unpleasant memory for me. I remember it being a complete nightmare, and now I'm back in it. Can you relate to that? Would you be freaked going back there? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to go back a while ago, um, and I just didn't. I'd go back and say hi to the one or two teachers that were, but I wouldn't want to go when there's the, when there were students there, um, just because I just don't want to. There is, I had, I would never change the experience that I had because there was some great parts to it. I did make course, some great yeah. friends in my final years when I was um, confident with my sexuality, mm -hmm. but indeed. At, um, it still holds a lot of bad memories. Can I ask you this co question, Colm? And it's, it's something I've heard, and I've heard especially in the last few years. Is it, you know, this presumption is a phase you're going through. How do you know you're gay when you're 12, 13, 14, 15? I presume you know you're gay when you know what gay is. Well, I presume you know you're heterosexual when Absolutely. you know heterosexual. Absolutely, but that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. That's a lot of parents would feel, oh, but I'm sure it's a phase. I don't want my son to know about homosexuality. I don't want him to be taught about gay rights or gay issues. Yeah, I, th I just, well, that's just, uh, I don't know, narrow-mindedness. I just don't understand it. Yeah, personally, it's... It's something I don't understand. It's just, it's, it's just another part of your personality Absolutely. that should be just accepted as, as much as I. And you should else. have been facilitated with that, of course, yeah. and you weren't. But, okay. But, but as an adult, uh, you know, you're over all that now, and you're. Oh, everything's great now. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's important to mention. But, but you just mentioned there, Blonde, that I think it's tied into the myths that you can be recruited. It's an early experience. All this usual but stereotypes this is what I'm that we have to, to deal with. I'm playing with, devil's which advocate here, which is yeah. not. I think parents would fear this being discussed in national school. But I'm worried that if you don't discuss it in national school. How are those boys and girls going to turn out as teenagers? Will they end up being bullies, homophobic bullies? They won't all end up being bullies, of course, no. but they'll all end up being sufferers for bullies because when you have homophobic bullying in a school, the entire school suffers. The teachers feel powerless. The other people who don't want to be engaged in it have to listen to it. There's often peer pressure to buy into it. In other words, mm -hmm. well, if I don't buy into this now, I'll be seen to be gay myself. And there's all this pressure, builds and builds and builds, so it has to be dealt with. And it's not rocket science. No, it's not. It's training teachers, resourcing teachers mm -hmm. to deal with it. Um, bringing it up, making sure it's part of all the curriculums, show it as a, a genuine, you know, for what it is. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's a valuable. Are you being invited to go into second level schools, or are you running it? You know, are you kind of putting the information out there and hope to be invited? We're hoping to be invited. Okay. There are very few schools have actually actually done it yet. Very few schools are engaging with it yet. Okay. It will happen. It needs to happen. It needs to yeah. happen. Now, have the Department of Education backed you? The Department of Education themselves are fine. I mean, they did, a, you know, that great campaign which I think we're going to talk about later with Michael Byrne and belong to. Um, Pubble have, you know, have re 
a resource pack for teachers. Mm -hmm. The department is fine, but they're not actually putting enough weight, I think, on the schools. It's up to the individual school boards, individual principals to deal with it, and they won't if they're not forced. There are posters out there. I don't think we have them now, but there are posters out there at the moment. There's a bit of campaign running where they show, there it is, actually. She's gay and we're cool with that for, you know, the, the lesbian. And then there's, he's gay and we're cool with this for the boys. Do you think that kind of thing is good? Well, personally, I think any visibility Every, is okay. good because we had invisibility. Yeah. No, not everybody likes them, I'm sure, but you know, yeah. any visibility is, I think, a step It's better. Up. It's an improvement, yeah. anyway. Thank you so much yeah. for coming. Thank no you problem. both so much. Thanks, Colin, for sharing your story with us. If you're interested in finding out about organisations that can help you deal with homophobic bully, maybe you've been a victim, maybe you bully yourself. You need as much help as the victim does. We have listed the contact details for various groups all located around the country. It's on our website. And also, more importantly, maybe you're just coming to realise that you are gay. Feel free to ring the numbers. They're all on our website, or to e. .ie forward slash the afternoon show or page 365 on Airtel. Shana.